this was coming, Pete. This Golden Globe winning freak is equally known for playing stoners. This is what your grandchildren are gonna be smoking. And for being a dramatic actor. Everybody wants to meet me except you, why? Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 James Franco performances. You can't be him, right? Pompous twit at your service. For this list, we're taking a look back at those performances that show off this actor at his finest or most memorable. That is, we were just having some fun, and it was perfect. Now they know you're not to be f***ed with. And are focusing on his starring roles in films and television. Good evening. I'm Dave Skylark. Despite the variety of performances in other areas. Number 10, Christian Longo, True Story. Call me Chris. After premiering at the 2015 Sundance Film Festival, Rupert Gould's feature debut stars James Franco as an accused murderer who takes on the identity of a New York Times journalist. When they apprehended him, he said he was Mike Finkel. Early reviews of True Story praised Franco's performance. While his dramatic pairing with real-life friend Jonah Hill offers a departure from the maniacal collaborations we've seen in recent years. I've followed your whole career. I guess I felt like I knew you. This real-life mystery will have Francophiles on the edge of their seats. Maybe at this point it doesn't matter. Number 9. Dr. William Will Rodman, Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Which one's this, number 9? Yeah, uh, uh, this is number nine. When Franco was first cast in Rupert Wyatt's sci-fi thriller, crowds were unsure whether he could execute a believable performance as a scientist trying to cure Alzheimer's disease. After all, in the years leading to this performance, he spent much of his time building his stoner comedy cred. I could finish your career with one phone call. I'll save you the trouble, I quit. As scientist Will Rodman, Franco studies brain diseases in the hopes of curing his father's Alzheimer's, but ultimately finds a BFF in an orphaned chimp named Caesar. I'm taking him out of here, right now. Rise of the Planet of the Apes is a refined portrait of the dangers of scientific progression and greed, and the importance of the human element, with James Franco anchoring the film expertly. Caesar, I'm sorry. This is my fault. This has to stop. Number eight, Scott Smith, Milk. Really? Today, James Franco has become well known for his eclectic taste in roles. But his performance in Gus Van Sant's Academy Award-winning film announced his departure from Hollywood's typecasting. <laughs> Are you on uppers or something? No, this is just plain me. As Harvey Milk's lover and campaign manager Scott Smith, Franco took home an Independent Spirit Award and proved he could take on a Freddie Mercury-style mustache while rocking a fluffy 70s hairstyle. Sorry, I uh, pissed in the pool. <sighs> it was the beginning of a new era in Franco's career as this role earned him an entirely new following. If you say anything about politics or the campaign or what speech you have to give or anything, I swear to God, I'm gonna stab you with this fork. Number seven, James Franco, AKA himself, this is the end. Why don't we do a sequel to Pineapple Express? I would love to do a sequel to Pineapple Express. Do you have any ideas? Five years after starring in Milk, Franco and his friends poked fun at themselves in Seth Rogen's apocalyptic comedy. I'm serious, boys, it's all in here. In the Book of Revelations. I took my Bible. While his performance didn't necessarily impress the foreign press or the Academy, he did display remarkable poise during a screwball comedy scene opposite Danny McBride. I don't know, man. That guy's gone crazy. Critics found the movie kind of wild, and modern crowds simply ate up the collection of dick jokes and self-deprecating humor. Hey, what's up, guys? Y'all cool? It's Channing Tatum. Truly a time capsule performance, This Is The End allowed Franco to fire back at critics with force. Your mama's pussy was the canvas, your dad's dick was the paintbrush. Boom, you're the art, huh? Thanks, James Franco. Number six, James Dean, James Dean. Okay, James Dean is next, James Dean. How would you like to become an American icon? Such a question would thrill any young actor, and James Franco took advantage of the opportunity by starring as the late James Dean in this TNT production. That's great. Coming off the success of Judd Apatow's short-lived television series, Freaks and Geeks, Franco was hand-selected by director Mark Riddle, a former friend of James Dean, and stunned viewers with his uncanny resemblance to the late actor. Who is this? It's James Dean. Franco ultimately won a Golden Globe Award for his hard work and embraced the idea of truly becoming a rebel without a cause. See that piece on you on the LA Times? You know why I get hammered? <laughs> Opposite. They said you're gonna get bigger than Brando and Cliff together. Number five, Daniel Desario, Freaks and Geeks. That's funny. It's a joke, right? 
Shortly before the 20th century came to a close, James Franco, Seth Rogen, and Jason Segel were already making us laugh. You were, uh, you were in my English class last year, right? You're that chick who got an A. As the freaks of Paul Feig's high school comedy, Franco and company displayed incredible charisma during the 18-episode run. Why not, man? It's church. I'm supposed to forgive people there. <laughs> so you hate my shirt? Forgive me, let me come in. The opening credit sequence established Franco's Daniel Desario as a dazed and confused, stonewashed delinquent, but also highlighted all the physical characteristics that led to his casting as James Byron Dean. There, now we're friends. See you at the mall. Where are you, on your period? Number four, Harry Osborn, Spider-Man franchise. Leave him alone. Once considered for the lead role of Spidey himself, James Franco was cast in Sam Raimi's superhero flick and played the well-groomed roommate of Peter Parker. Hey, buddy. As the son of a mad scientist, Harry Osborn finds himself in a rather sticky situation, since Pops elevates his cardio game by transforming into the Green Goblin. What have you done? What have you done? Franco's natural charisma and star power reached the masses in this first Spider-Man flick, thus allowing for bigger checks and more time for art projects. Peter, you killed my father. Of course, he reprised his role in both Spider-Man 2 and Spider-Man 3. Avenge me. Avenge me! No! Number three, Saul Silver, Pineapple Express. What's it called? Pineapple Express. Pineapple Express. Yes. Bromance, Fat Blunts, and James Franco. That's right, it's the perfect equation for a Golden Globe nominated performance. You know, I'm gonna become something, man. As soon as she dies, I'm gonna become a civil engineer. I'm gonna design septic tanks for playgrounds. Little kids can take shits. As a long-haired pot dealer with a quintessential stoner laugh, James Franco's hilarious role as Saul Smith further established his versatility as an actor while innovating the genre. F the police! By 2008, America maintained a constant high on Seth Rogen comedy, and James Franco pulled back the reins for a subtle performance. Oh shit. We laughed, we cried, and stoners often did both at the same time. Oh, all right, man, come on up. I buzzed it. Open the door when I buzz it. Buzz it in three seconds, exactly. One, two. Does it work? Number two, Alien Spring Breakers. Morning. Who are you? My name's Alien. My real name's Al, but truth be told, I ain't from this planet, y'all. That smile on his face says it all. With beautiful co-stars like Selena Gomez, Vanessa Hudgens, and Ashley Benson, James Franco was given a free pass to be as absolutely badass and ridiculous as possible. Look at my shit. I got, I got shorts, every color. I got designer t-shirts. I got gold bullets, motherfucking vampires. Harmony Korine's film has already established a cult following, in large part due to Franco's otherworldly performance as Alien. Spring break, spring break, spring break forever. <laughs> his physical appearance mystified viewers, just like that controversial Oscar dress did, and his dialogue was bizarre. Notice me. And yet, Franco won several awards for Spring Breakers and really made us want to look at his shit. Look at my shit! Look at my shit! I'm a fucking nightmare, motherfucker! I'm the motherfucking Death Star up in this shit! Dropping fucking planets! Before we unveil our top pick, Cause Kimmy, you're a firework! Here are a few honorable mentions. Hi, Mr. Heffler. Hef, please. Welcome to your party. Thank you! Thank you! Oh, the great and powerful! The rest of my guys just got back from a 72. I don't want to seem like I'm not concerned. But where they've been, it's a miracle more guys don't blow off for a few days. Who are you? Lane Rawlings. We arrived in uniform, Mr. Rawlings. Yeah, I wasn't quite sure how it all went together. It's just a game. Played very well. We kind of sucked. Um, no, you sucked. Thank you, Mr. B. 
it. <laughs> Number one, Aaron Ralston, 127 hours. Please, please. Really love me. <laughs> Based on the memoir of real-life mountaineer Aaron Ralston, Danny Boyle's heart-wrenching tale produced the definitive James Franco performance. About 150 milliliters of water left, which should keep me alive till tomorrow night. No gimmicks, no stoner jokes, just a man stuck between a rock and a hard place, trying to accept the unfathomable. Slow death or immediate amputation. This rock. <laughs> This rock has been waiting for me my entire life. <laughs> yes, 127 hours could be categorized as a Debbie Downer kind of flick, but the contained setting allowed Franco to lose himself in the physical and psychological trappings of Blue John Canyon. Lesson, don't buy the cheap made in China multi-tool. I tried to find my Swiss Army knife, but this thing came free with a flashlight. Flashlight was a piece of shit, too. Franco was honored by the Academy for his work with a Best Actor nod, and also left an indelible mark on cinema with his dramatic turn. <laughs> Do you agree with our list? Suck my dick! What's your favorite James Franco performance? For more mind-blowing Tom Tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. I just want to take this time to tell you that the times we've spent together have been awesome.